Welcome to The Perfect Witness. If you're watching this video, you must have a deposition scheduled in the near future. A deposition is an opportunity for lawyers to learn about you, your life experiences, and what you recall about your particular case. Being deposed can be intimidating and stressful, but in this video, you'll learn how to successfully maneuver the deposition process. The purpose of this video is to remove the stress of being deposed by explaining the process and to teach you the fundamental skills to deal with any questions presented to you. The video is designed as an interactive exercise to help you get a better handle on the deposition process. It's divided into several sections and from time to time, the video will automatically stop to give you a break. Throughout the video, you'll find summary questions or short quizzes that will enable you to check your progress. Depositions don't win cases, but they can hurt them when a witness is unprepared. So what is a deposition? A deposition is a statement given under oath which seeks to commit the witness to a set of facts according to their recollection. As the deponent, that's you, the person who will be answering the other lawyer's questions, you'll be sworn in by the court reporter at the very beginning of the deposition and asked if you'll agree to tell the truth throughout the entire deposition. Sir, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Although it should go without saying, you must always tell the truth. Regardless of whether breaks are taken during the deposition, you'll remain under oath throughout the entire process, and the oath taken at the beginning of the deposition continues until the deposition is completed. If your deposition is videotaped, making a good appearance extends to the mannerisms and body language a video will capture. Sitting still and upright is important to ensure consistency in your video. Rocking back and forth, putting your hands over your mouth, or smirking, for example, is distracting and often sends negative signals to the viewers. Sir, state your name for the record. My name is Alan Whitfield. Do you understand that we are here to take your deposition testimony and a lawsuit filed by my client, Janet Blackwell? Yeah, I think that's what we're doing here. You understand you took the oath to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Okay. It's time to focus on how to deal with the questions posed to you by the questioning lawyer. This portion of the video will teach you the five fundamental rules which apply in every deposition and will walk you through various scenarios where witnesses can make mistakes so that you can learn from them and not repeat them during your deposition. You must never lie, but what you reveal and how you reveal certain facts can significantly impact the case. Since the deposition is typically the only opportunity an opposing lawyer can speak with you directly, it's the best time to determine what type of witness you'll make at trial. For example, are you credible? Are you going to make a favorable impression with the judge or jury? Do you have a temper or are there hot button topics which make you react in a certain way? Questions will be asked to allow the opposing lawyer an opportunity to form opinions about you throughout the entire deposition. Without a doubt, the importance of maintaining your credibility cannot be overstated. Once your credibility is lost, it's most likely lost forever, so you can never, under any circumstances, lie. Why did you leave Applied Plastics? If I tell them the truth about being fired, they'll use it against me. Plus, how will they find out since my old boss is long gone? I, uh, I left for a better opportunity. Although no one in the room except Mr. Whitfield knows it, he just broke the most fundamental rule during every deposition. He lied. After Mr. Whitfield's deposition, Ms. Blackwell's attorney obtained Mr. Whitfield's employment records from Applied Plastics. The employment records revealed that Mr. Whitfield was actually fired for a harassing behavior. Mr. Whitfield knows he was caught in a lie. Watch and see how Mr. Whitfield's lie affects your perception of him as a witness and his credibility. Now why did you leave Applied Plastics? I was terminated. You were fired? Yes. Sir, do you recall providing your deposition testimony in this case? Yes. Do you recall me asking you about why you left your employment at Applied Plastics? Vaguely. 
If you will, look at page 23, lines 13 through 15. And if you would just read that, those three lines for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please. Question, why did you leave applied plastics? Answer, for a better opportunity. Mr. Whitfield, you previously... You must listen to the question being presented to you and only answer if you understand the entire question being asked. After listening to the question, make sure you understand all components of the question and have personal knowledge about what you're being asked to answer. Witnesses often make the mistake of thinking that every question a lawyer asks can and should be answered. This is not the case. Lawyers often ask bad questions, which are overly complicated with too many moving parts. Usually, these questions are objectionable, and your lawyer will object. During the deposition, allow the lawyer to ask the question and then pause before you answer. This is called the purposeful pause. The purposeful pause between the question and answer allows for a number of things to occur. First, it allows your lawyer the opportunity and time to object. Second, it allows you the opportunity to think about the question before answering it. Third, it keeps the record clear and concise since the court reporter cannot type two individuals speaking at the same time. Ms. Blackwell, it's my understanding that you first started working for Production Enterprises. Just in a few years ago, I started working there. And you first started working as a secretary to Mr. But yeah, I was working as a secretary to Mr. Whitfield. Ms. Blackwell, it's my understanding that you first started working for Production Enterprises as a temporary secretary? That is correct. And you first started working as a secretary for Mr. Whitfield? Correct. Obtaining discovery about facts, other witnesses, and documents is one of the primary purposes of every deposition. Since the details of every case are paramount, being familiar with documents before the deposition is crucial to your success. You and your lawyer should spend time reviewing key documents, reviewing responses to discovery and depositions, if available, and practicing how to answer difficult questions about a case. Since you lived the events giving rise to any lawsuit and or have personal knowledge about the case, during your deposition, the questioning lawyer will want to pin you down to a set of facts regarding the events giving rise to the lawsuit. In your deposition, you're committing yourself to a version of the facts, so if you guess about certain things which you don't specifically recall, your credibility will be questioned at trial. Your goal in the deposition is to provide concise and accurate answers to every question. With these five fundamental rules, you're on your way to handling even the most difficult questions. And surely after meeting with your lawyer to discuss the specifics of your case, you'll be completely prepared. With these rules in mind, however, there is one final lesson we want to discuss with you. Sometimes lawyers get aggressive and argumentative with witnesses. While your lawyer will likely object, you should feel comfortable defending your position. If you try to outsmart the lawyer or be overly argumentative, you'll lose credibility. Most juries expect lawyers to ask hard questions, but they don't expect the witness to be overly argumentative or try to be funny by outsmarting the lawyer. Just remain professional at all times.